another typography feature in InDesign to help with legibility, especially with lists of information, is to create a bullet list. So I'm going to go to File and Open. And here in Chapter 5, Folder 13, Bullet Lists, I have two boxes here. I'll zoom out so you can see those. And what I've done is I have typed in all this text. Then I hit return. So you can see an extra hard return there. Then I typed in more text, hit return, and hit return again. So these little spaces are actual spaces for text. Okay. I want to make what's called a bullet list. And just so I can see this on the screen a little better, I'm going to delete this bottom section here and let's delete all of this bottom section so we have a shorter list that way I can zoom in on this a little better there we go okay if I highlight all of this text that I want to turn into a bulleted list I can go way up here in the upper right corner there's that little pop-up again and for demo sake, I'm going to pull this over so you can see that. Let's go right there. And I'm going to say bulleted lists, bullets and numbering. There we go. All right. Under bullets and numbering, the type of list I want is a bullet list. The bullets I want are these little uh, bullet icons. So I'm going to click preview. And there we go. There's my bulleted list. Now it's going to push each line in so I have a left indent and I have a tab position let's highlight that and hit the down arrow let's bring those back a little bit I'm gonna go with the left indent hit the up arrow okay that just keeps pushing it around that's not really what I wanted so let's see if the first line indent goes well that's pushing it around too okay but I'm going to keep it right here for a second and I'm going to click OK. And when I click outside, notice what it did with my type. Okay, even the blank spaces got a bullet. And now it's pushing my type. You never want bullets to go or type to go underneath bullets. Okay. They're a way to call attention to specific areas of text. You, your eye sees a bullet, then it reads. But here, when you have hard returns, this is the wrong way to do it. I'll hit W. Now I got little polka dots all over the place. Okay, so what I'm going to do to try and do a bulleted list correctly is I'm going to delete the spaces. So right here on chalk, I'm going to hit delete and return. Highlight this size, right, this space right here delete and let's do that each time highlight this space delete highlight delete or just click and delete those empty spaces between these blocks of text there we go now I'm gonna highlight this go to my bullets and numbering again ah, let's bring this in so you can see that bullets and numbering I will make this a bullet list and now I want to mess around with the slider so let's see what left indent does hit the down arrow that does nothing hit the right or the up arrow that's kind of pushing it over not really what I was hoping for let's see the first line indent let's hit the down nope can't hit that hit the up arrow now let's do the tab position down Okay, and I still want that left indent coming in a bit. So let's see if we can mess around with this and see if we can get this to flow the way I want it to flow. Go down, nope, up, down. There we go. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> So it has to do with the left indent and the first line indent. So let me cancel that and do it again. Okay, left indent and first line indent. So I've gotten rid of all my spaces here. 
highlight my text, go to the pop-up in the upper right, bullets and numbering. I wanna make a bullet list. Okay, first thing I would recommend, set your tab position to zero, or as low as you can go. Now I'm gonna set the left indent up, like that. The first line indent to the left, and there we go. This value right here canceled out my tab position. Now if I do left indent again, let's see what that does. No, that just pushes it from the edge of the box. First line indent, nope, that's too much, okay? So what you want is a left indent or not, you can just keep it on the edge of the box. That really just pushes it around. Tab position, let's see if I hit the up arrow or down arrow, nope, that's really not doing anything. So I would really recommend for bullet lists, you do the top two values. A positive value for the left indent if you wanna push it away from the edge of the box, but you don't need to. And a negative value for the first line indent. There's a positive value, there's a negative value. And now when I click OK, I'll click outside. We'll take a look at this by clicking out here and hitting W, and there we go. But these bullets are way, way, way too close to that type. So I'm gonna highlight all this right here. Go back to bullets and numbering and we'll turn on our preview. And I still wanna mess with these buttons here. Let's see what a left indent, if I do a negative, okay, I can't do that. Let's do a tab indent, that's not working. First line, now set the tab, left indent, tab. Okay, let's see, left, and there we go. But I want this type away from my bullets. So I'm trying to see how I can push that away from the bullets here. Okay, first line, tab position. I like that, but I don't like this type wrapping underneath the bullet. So I'm trying to see if I can get these to work with each other. I don't like that. There we go, jeez. Okay, wow, that was crazy. All right, so here it is. Whenever you set up your bullets, I, I hate bullets, but I want you to know how they work. You do a left indent and then a negative first line indent. There we go, I wanted my bullets away from my type. Little bit of a positive value for the left indent. Push it away from the edge of the box so your type gets away. And then a negative value for the first line indent. Okay, man, there we go. So now when I click outside, that's what a bullet list should look like. Now keep in mind, these are your typical bullets, but you can change those. So I can highlight, you can't highlight a bullet. You can only highlight the type attached to those bullets. I'll go to this pop-up again, right here, bullets and numbering. And now I can change those to diamonds or this little double arrowhead or back to the bullets or I can click add. And now I can go through my fonts. So I'll take my fonts, click and drag down and I'm gonna come way down here to wing dings. These are symbol fonts. And I wanna look for this little hand pointer. There we go. Click okay. Now I click, and now I got a little hand pointer, but then I have to do a first line indent to push that back a little more. Now I'm like, hey, look at this, look at this, look at this, pay attention, pay attention. Okay, if I click this bullet right here, I can click okay. You get the idea. But here's what I wanna do. So I hate those bullets. They're really confusing to get a hold of, but Keep in mind, you're gonna get bullets on your midterm, so you gotta know how to deal with them. Okay, what I wanna do also 
is change the spacing between this. Notice there's no space. It's like right when I'm done reading, is your child ready to babysit, safe sitter, messenger bag, manual, how to read. There should be a gap between these little chunks or bulleted lists of information. So I think the top one is fine. I'm gonna highlight from here on down, hit Command Option T for my paragraph panel. And I have this option right here, Space Before. So I'm just gonna hit my up arrow right here and just push these apart a little bit. There we go. Now it's a lot easier to read a little chunk of information at a time not blending all my text together. But the last thing I wanted to show you here with a bulleted list is how to change the color of your bullets. How can I change the color of these diamonds when I can't even select the diamonds? They're kind of an automated feature. They're not editable. But I would like these to be red. Well, I can't change it if I can't highlight it. So what you do is you highlight a bullet list and then you go to Type Menu, Bulleted and Numbered Lists, and Convert Your Bullets to Text. See, now they're highlighted. So I can highlight this one, go to my swatches, I'm on T for Type, and I will make that red. There we go. I'll zoom in so you can see that a little better. There we are. So now if I wanted to change every bullet, I'm gonna highlight that, edit and copy it. And now it's just a matter of highlighting and pasting. Command V, Command V, Command V, Command V. And this is what I'm gonna ask you to do on the midterm. Create a bulleted list and then color your bullets a different color. So remember this tutorial video. You can use my videos on the midterm and one page on the midterm, you will see this list again. You should know how to deal with bulleted lists. They're a little complicated. So again, review this video. You can see how I was screwing it up too. You really gotta get the hang of what values to change in here. So again, under this pop-up, bullets and numbers here, um, you want the two top sliders or values a positive value for the left indent and a negative value for the first line indent that's what can give you a proper arrangement for a bulleted list if you have to write that down in your notes top two value sliders a positive value for the left indent and a negative value for the first line indent and you will get your bulleted lists to read correctly. A little crazy, but it is a part of InDesign. You should know how to do it. In fact, you're going to know how to do it because that is on your midterm. So I'll see you in the next tutorial.